one of the really nice things about mathematics is that the knowledge in books does not really change. So you can use really old math books to learn mathematics. And of course you can use new books too, and new books are great. But as a collector of math books, I really, really like old books. This one is really special because this one was originally written in Russian and it was used in the Soviet Union. And this is the translation to English. Also, this one is a little bit more accessible than a lot of my other Soviet era books because the material is not as advanced. So if you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you can actually buy this book and start using it to learn mathematics. I wanna emphasize that I've noticed from looking at these Soviet era books that a lot of times the examples presented and the techniques presented are different than what you see in modern books. Is it better? Is it worse? I don't know, it's different. They're all pretty tough reads, but let's go ahead and take a really close look at this book. This book was written by A. Kourosh. It's called Higher Algebra, and it was published by Mir Publishers. Still has the dust jacket on it. Let's go ahead and read the inside here of the dust jacket. This present textbook on higher algebra is designed for the mathematics departments of universities. It covers the fundamentals of linear algebra, the primary aim of which is the study of arbitrary systems of first degree equations, which are linear equations, and the algebra of polynomials, where the emphasis is on equations in one unknown, but of arbitrary degree. The attractive feature of this text is the mathematically rigorous presentation of the material coupled with its excellence as an educational tool. Its value is enhanced by the abundance of examples and problems, many of which have been worked out in great detail. This book has gone through nine editions in Russian and has been translated into a number of other languages. For many years, it has enjoyed great popularity among students and teachers alike. Wow, wow. What a rare book. Now there's a weird symbol here. Maybe some of you know what this means. Uh, it just says book house, private LTD, and yeah, something else there. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. And then I guess that's some type of currency. I believe that is uh, the, the Russian currency. I don't know much uh, about, about that. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Mere Publishers, so Mere Publishers is a publishing company that was uh, in Russia, I don't know if it still exists, and they would take books that were written in Russian by leading Soviet scientists and translate them to various languages, and then the books would be sold all over the world. This guy here, George Yankovsky, is a real pro because he's translated several of the books. His name appears in several of the books that I have from the Soviet era. And then here you can see the copyrights. First published in 72, second printing is 75, third printing is 80. And then this one is from 1980 and it says something there in uh, Russian. Let's take a look at the content so you're gonna see it's actually quite friendly. So systems of linear equations, so determinants, so that's something that you've probably seen. So it's stuff you learn, you know, Kramer's rule. If you're watching this video, you've probably encountered Kramer's rule. So you can actually read this book and understand some of the material because maybe you've already seen it. Systems of linear equations, that's something you learn in a college algebra class, but you can see it starts with vector spaces. So it's a rigorous treatment of a lot of the things that you've already seen, which is kind of nice. It kind of makes it stick a little bit better. You know, it's a second time that you're, or a third time that you're looking at something, it sticks better. Complex numbers, polynomials in the roots, quadratic forms and linear spaces. I'm gonna turn the page very, very carefully here because I don't want to uh, damage my book. This book, I don't know how much I paid. I know I probably paid more than 30 or $40 for this book. Euclidean spaces, evaluating roots of polynomials, fields and polynomials, polynomials in several unknowns, polynomials with rational coefficients, the normal form of a matrix, groups, then it has a bibliography and an index. By the way, I'll, I'll look for this book and if I can find any copies, I will leave a link in the description. I don't know if there's any copies available, but usually there's only a few copies for sale of these books because they're out of print and they're very rare. Let's read the introduction here together. The education of the mathematics major begins with the study of three basic disciplines, 
mathematical analysis, analytical geometry, and higher algebra. These disciplines have a number of points of contact, some of which overlap. Together they constitute the foundation upon which rests the whole edifice of modern mathematical science. Higher algebra, the subject of this text, is a far-reaching and natural generalization of the basic school course of elementary algebra. Cool. So let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the actual mathematics in this book. I'm going to turn the page here very carefully. It's a pretty long intro. There's a little stain here. It looks like a bug or something. I don't want to touch it. And here's, here's the beginning. And this is not an easy read, but again, it's material that maybe you've seen. So it might be a little bit easier than a lot of the other Soviet era books that I have. The method of successive elimination of unknowns. You know, modern math books aren't written <laughs> with this language. We begin the course of higher algebra with the study of systems of first degree equations in several unknowns, or to the use to use the more common term, systems of linear equations. There we go. The theory of systems of linear equations serves as the foundation for a vast and important division of algebra, linear algebra, to which a good portion of this book is devoted, the first three chapters in particular. Yeah, there's a lot of linear algebra, as you saw from briefly looking at the contents here. And you can see here, it goes through, and it actually does have uh, examples and let's just, let's like jump ahead to see what we have here so, so you can get a look at some of the mathematics. So it's just a textbook. It's just a regular textbook that's written in a rigorous fashion. And this is the book that students actually used. I do think that this book could be quite challenging to learn from. Like, you know, if you compare this to like a modern book uh, that covers these topics, it's gonna be easier. So what this book gives you is a more rigorous mathematical treatment of a lot of the things that you've already seen. So you learn these things in other courses. And in modern times, I don't think you can actually, it's not possible, there's not actually a course that you can take in college that covers everything that's in this book because of the unique uh, contents. Let's take a look at the back here. Here it talks a little bit about the authors. I think we should at least read that. These people, they did a lot of work. The late professor, Alexander Kurosh, DSC for many years held the chair of higher algebra at Moscow University. Korosh's investigations in the field of higher algebra represent a substantial contribution to modern mathematics, especially his fundamental research on the theory of groups. Korosh's publications have invariably aroused lively interest among algebraists, particularly his books, The Theory of Groups, and Lectures in Higher Algebra, which have become standard texts for universities in the Soviet Union and a number of other countries. Both books have been translated to English. And I want to emphasize that I currently don't own both books. I think I did find them at one point, but they were quite expensive, right? These books are very, very expensive because they're so rare. Um, you know, the Soviet Union does not exist anymore. And so these books are pretty rare. Now, if you live in another country and you're watching this video, and this might be interesting to some of you who uh, live in the US, these books, I feel like they're easier to find in, for example, Latin American countries. A lot of people uh, in South America and in Spain, even in Mexico, uh, in Cuba, they, they use books that were published by mere publishers and they're in Spanish. So mere publishers sent their books all over the world. So a lot of times uh, it's easier to find these books for some reason uh, in other languages. I own a few uh, in other languages. Here you can see a beautiful technique. I love this. This is called Newton's method, and this is something that you use to uh, approximate roots. It's a really cool method where you can use tangent lines for approximation. This is something you learn in Calculus 1, and I feel like when you learn this in Calculus 1, at least when I learned it, I didn't like it, but as a teacher, I really appreciated showing my classes, you know, the, the method and the derivation, and Looks like uh, they tried to do the same here, tried to go through the whole process uh, and explain everything. And he's, he spends a lot of time on it, right? There's a lot of time here spent uh, on the derivatives. There's the formula for Newton's method. And they give you examples here. Pretty cool stuff, right? I have to just give this book a whiff really quick. I have to smell it because, oh, wow, wow, rings. Wow, it talks about rings. So really cool. Oh, you know what we should do now? Let's carefully take the dust jacket off just to see what it looks like without the dust jacket. 
So not super impressive, but still kind of interesting. If you find copies of this book, by the way, they're more expensive when they come with the dust jacket. Um, the dust jacket typically adds value to uh, books. I collect uh, textbooks, which is kind of strange. So I have a lot of mathematics, physics, engineering, chemistry, biology books, mostly math books. Korosh, higher algebra, really nice, right? Really nice, nice little book here. Fields. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's incredible to think that students uh, in the Soviet Union use books like these um, because they're so hardcore. In general, that's true though in English. I want to emphasize that um, books of the past were definitely more um, intense and harder to read than modern books. So over the years, math books have become easier to read uh, and it's become easier to learn mathematics because of having easier books to read and because of having videos and stuff on the internet. The difficult thing to understand, I think, is that in order to learn mathematics, you actually have to struggle. You actually have to sit down and do it and think. So if everything is easy, you'll never get good at it. So despite the fact that math books have become easier over the years, that's not to say that people have become worse at math. Because in order to get good at math, you still have to sit down with a book and struggle and work through it and think. You have to think about the problems and, and try to solve them on your own. And that's how you get good. And that's why I still think books like this do have a lot of you know, educational value. right? If you sit down with a book like this and you just read a few pages a day, it, it makes a big difference in, in your learning. It really does. You're going to get perspectives that perhaps uh, you, you've never seen before. Yeah, lots of examples too in this one. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. So yeah, I just wanted to show you one of my books from my collection. I have a very large collection of math books, Soviet books. I have books in other languages. And this one is one of my nicer ones. And I think it's more accessible. It's called Higher Algebra. It's by A. Korosh. And it was originally written in Russian. So I'll try to find copies. There's probably, I haven't looked, but I'm going to guess there's probably like five or six copies available. I don't know. I'll leave a link in the description to anything I can find in case you feel like um, picking a copy up. I do think these are rare, and uh, in my opinion, I think it's valuable, but um, you know, it, it probably, it, it's not super valuable, right? I, most of these Russian books, or rather books that were previously written in Russian, uh, the ones I've purchased have all been under $100 because you know, I have to budget because you know, I do have a lot of books. But usually they're somewhere between like 30 and 50 bucks a book, which I think is amazing if, if you can find any copies. Anyways, until next time, keep doing mathematics.